Hey guys, Insight number five, last one of the week. Hopefully you've had a good week and you've been following Come Follow Me, study, keep it up a little bit every day, right? Or maybe you're a do it all in one block kind of person, but I find it better to do a little bit every day because it makes my day just that so much brighter just doing that 15, 20 minutes. Really does help. Sometimes only five minutes and then I go look at something else, but yeah, definitely a little bit every day really helps to solidify that whole lesson because we're looking at it throughout the whole week rather than just one block um but you know you do what works for you right okay so section 97 this is to the missouri saints because the other ones were to the kirtland saints except for 94 which was to everybody or oh, specifically for that particular temple um anyway go back and look at those all right so um this is, this is the Missouri Saints hadn't built the temple yet because of the persecution. They signed an order that they were going to leave the area. Um, so they were kind of like, we're out of time, we don't have funds, what the heck are we going to do? And this is the Lord kind of saying to them, look, the kingdom's in your hands. It's your decisions. It's up to you guys. Yes, I will totally guide you. I will help you. I am there with you. But you need to do stuff too. You can't just let me do it all. So I kind of like that, um, being that, well, just recently some very controversial words were spoken um, and I think taken completely the wrong way and I don't know if that's what it meant, but I still have faith in the person who spoke them, knowing that I have faith in myself too and I've said some completely stupid things at times. I have completely worded them wrong and really upset people. So I'm choosing to go with what I know and I know that that person is not a hater of people. So you're going to be wondering what I'm talking about. But if you know, you know. And if you don't, then you don't need to. Um, but the kingdom's in our hands. So even though we might have leaders that might speak words that hurt us. And that has happened to me. Whether it's been higher up or local. Right? The kingdom's in our hands. What we do with the gospel and the kingdom of God on the earth is in our hands. It's our choice. It's what we do. We either are all in and we do everything we can to make the gospel the most loving, awesome, wonderful place, the most Zion place that we can create, or we get controversial with it, or we just leave. Or there's just different things in there. And the quote I've got for this is actually quite um, harsh for a lot of people, I think, but it's also very true. Some of us find it humorous because we know what we're talking about um, and we can see that in ourselves and, and what we're doing. But I'll get to that. I digress on that. But the kingdom's in our hands and this is what section 97 is kind of telling us. So even though we are guided by a living prophet and we have some wonderful leadership people, wonderful, and I pray for them daily because they do such amazing work and I certainly don't think I could do any better. Um, I am not saying that ever. But how church looks how Zion looks is up to us it's in our hands it's our choices our decisions our intentions so if you want to make a difference you make a difference it's as simple as that or you don't yeah I know it can seem kind of harsh all right um verses 8 and 21 are the one we're going to focus on here this is what Zion people look like or behave like right because we all look different but this is what our behavior looks like. So that's what I'm getting at here, not actually physical appearance, just what we look like in behavior. Uh, verse 8 says, Verily I say unto you, all among them who know their hearts are honest, they are broken and our spirits are contrite. They are willing to observe their covenants by sacrifice. Yea, every sacrifice which I, the Lord, shall command, they are accepted of me. So how much do we have to sacrifice? Everything the Lord asks. Um, and you know what? You know when he asks to sacrifice the blessings that come with that huge just you don't see them immediately all the time and i've sacrificed relationships friendships people opportunities for career for gaining a lot of money a lot of worldly things i have given up to know christ and the blessings are huge but the sacrifice is also huge so if you're feeling that the sacrifice is too much, it is huge. And it's all right to acknowledge that it's huge. Keep in mind that the blessings that are going to come are also huge. They just don't happen right away. They take more effort and they do come. 
So keep faith in that. But yes, Zion people, their hearts are honest. They are broken, as in, not broken, like humble. They have humility. They're not broken literally. Um, although, tends to be that to get the humility, you get a broken heart at some point. You get that hurt and you go through that experience. Uh, spirits are contrite, willing to observe their covenants by sacrifice again the sacrifice. Now, the other verse here is 21. 21 talks about being pure in heart. It says, Therefore, verily, thus saith the Lord, let Zion rejoice, for this is Zion, the pure in heart. Therefore, let Zion rejoice while all the wicked shall mourn. Now, Zion isn't just a place, and I, I've really got to bring that up, because back then, they looked at Zion as a place, and certainly it can be. Um, you know, the information that you know I've got on this is, is interesting, it's quoted. Um, so, yeah, it's not just a place, it's a people. So I've got some, got some reading here. Um, so... Zion is uh, Zion in that time was the closest thing to like the emblem or the insight among all the vocabulary of the words of the gospel. Zion draws the mind towards heaven, toward God, the spirit inward into a state of worthiness, gratitude, the heart outward in service toward others, and the feet onward toward a place of refuge for a co covert from storm and from rain. That's Isaiah 4 6. Is a, there's some stuff in there talking if you want to look about um, more about that Zion type place is Isaiah 4 6 so Zion definitely can be a place but it's also a state of mind a noble destination a people a vision of perfection like we're not going to get there yet but we will get there it's a vision of perfection it's going to happen an abode of God an encapsulating summary of everything that is honest true chaste benevolent virtuous lovely or of good report or praiseworthy and that links into the 13th article of faith Zion is not a utopia um, beyond mortal access. It's not some Shangri-La mystical realm that we talk about and never go to. It exists right now in our stakes, in our homes, in us. Um, it's just that noble level of covenant righteousness, that level of peace, unity and spiritual attainment and that gains the highest blessings from Heavenly Father. So if you're feeling, I don't know where Zion is, I don't know how to get it, it's within you. It can be within you. If you, It doesn't mean you have to go there. In this instance, they were talking about a place, but then the Lord actually says to them, look, it's also a people. Because even if that place existed, it's only there, and it's only like that because of the people that are there. So Zion is people. And it's in you right now to be Zion-like, to have that in your home. And if you're the only member in your home, or you're the only one looking to do this in your home, you can do this in your space, in your little sphere of influence and existence. You can have a Zion place and be a Zion person. Um, the quote I've had, and I said that it's from Elder Maxwell, it can seem harsh, but it's super true. He said, let us once and for all establish our residence in Zion and give up the summer cottage in Babylon. And I just, I kind of love that. It's blunt, it's to the point, and it's kind of true. We keep trying to have one foot in the world and enjoy, you know, that kind of stuff. And and while that can be true, are our hearts in Zion, right? Stop trying to be that Sunday-only member where you just rush to do your lesson on a Saturday night, only do church stuff on a Sunday, and then just get whatever for the rest of the week. It, just give every effort you can to make Zion a part of your life, a part of you every single day and everything you do. It certainly plays off. As you can read here, the blessings are huge, as I said. Sacrifices, yes, but the blessings are just beautiful. Not what you'd expect or when you expect them, but I absolutely tell you and testify to you that they are amazing and totally worth the effort. If you've got any comments on this, please share them. Again, I have gone over time, and I beg your forgiveness on this, but I just love talking to you guys about this subject, the subject that Zion is within us, that Zion is us, and that we can be that, and we can be that for someone else to help them realize and to help them gain their confidence in being a Zion person too. And, yeah, that's just the most beautiful experience too. So... Love you guys. Stay safe out there. Keep doing good. And I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.